Good evening. Thank you for joining us at the Jacob and Cushman's San Diego Food Bank virtual annual meeting and COVID-19 donor town hall. My name is Steve Bernstein. I am the board chair of this incredible organization, and I will now call this meeting to order. For, you, for those of you here for the first time, welcome. And for those of you back, welcome back. Uh, we're excited to be able to share some incredible uh, things that have been happening with our organization and the impact in San Diego. Tonight we are joined virtually online by our donors, elected officials, community partners, stakeholders, staff, and San Diego Food Bank board members. Tonight's meeting is light on business and heavy on giving you an update on the food bank's work over the past year, and most importantly, the work we've been doing during COVID-19 pandemic. I won't steal our CEO's thunder um, of his report, but I've been involved with the food bank for the last eight years, and I can tell you that the way that the food bank is, is executing in the pandemic today in this crisis is because of the history and, and the, the legacy that they've built and the incredible work and infrastructure they've built in this organization and the impact they've made over the last eight years. I wanted to not only recognize Jim Floros, but also all of our incredible employees at the San Diego Food Bank and our senior staff, Vanessa Moore, Chris Carter, Casey Castillo, and Denise Agostini. Without them, a lot of this is not possible. So first, the business portion of the evening. We will move to nominations and elections our governance Com committee chair, Steve Rawls, unfortunately is unable to be here this evening. So Bob Bollinger, member of our executive committee and nominating committee, will fill in to call for the board nominations and elections. I'll bring up Bob. Thank you, Steve. Uh, the Board Governance and Recruitment Committee submits, is going to submit two nominations for election tonight. Uh, the board term is two years and will expire on June 30, 2022. And as I mentioned, there are two nominees. One is uh, an outstanding nominee. Quite frankly, the second one is a bit suspect. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the first uh, nominee is Sandy Curl. Sandy Curl is the general manager at the San Diego County Water Authority. Curl is, has more than 25 years of progressively responsible experience in all aspects of municipal management. Throughout her professional career, she has been active in the International County Management Association and has served as chair of the San Diego City County Managers Association and San Diego Regional Training Center. And in the tra tradition of Harvey Berger, the second nomination is me. Uh, that would be Bollinger. Uh, and all I'll say is uh, uh, I, it was a privilege to serve on the board for uh, six years, two years of chair, and I'm excited about rejoining it. And I will ask everyone to ignore the fact that in my hiatus year, we've had this record-breaking year. <laughs> is there a motion uh, from the board to elect uh, these two candidates uh, to the board of directors? Second. All in favor, aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, the Board and Governance uh, Recruitment Committee submits four nominations for re-election. The board term is two years and will expire on June 30, 2022. The nominees are Steve Bernstein, uh, Sheldon Derrison, Scott Heath, and Chris Henn. Do I? Is there a motion uh, to re-elect these four board members? Second. All in favor say aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, the Board and Governance Recruitment Committee is also pleased to present our slate of officers uh, for the Board of Directors. Officer terms are one year in length. The nominees are Steve Bernstein as chair, Kimberly Layton for vice chair, Sheldon Derrison for treasurer, and Clifford, <laughs> we all know him as Rip, Ripito for secretary. Is there a motion uh, to elect these four officers? Second. All in favor, say aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. 
And finally, at this time, the Board Governance and Recruitment Committee has one nomination for advisory board membership, and that is longtime board member Harvey Berger, Berger past board secretary and HR committee chair. And is there a motion to elect Harvey to the advisory board? Second? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Thank you, Bob. So now I'd like to uh, recognize some of our retiring board members tonight and their tireless support for the food bank's mission over the years of service. As I mentioned earlier, I've been in, in this organization or involved in this organization for quite some time. And the three people we're going to recognize have just done an outstanding job and not only tirelessly worked for the organization, but did an incredible job in our community as well. First is Harvey Berger. We would like to congratulate Harvey Berger, who is retiring after six years of service. Harvey served on the board of directors from 2014 to 2020 and served as board secretary from 2015 to 2020. Thank you, Harvey, for your dedication to the work of the food bank. Next, also retiring, is Steve Rolls. Steve is a board member who served on the board of directors from 2014 to 2020. We want to thank Steve for his years of service and his dedication to the food bank's mission. Thank you, Steve. And last but not least is Tony Schwartz. Tony is a board member who served from 2014 to 2020. We want to thank Tony for his years of service and dedication to the Food Bank's mission and the dedication to the San Diego community. As I said earlier, we're going to be light on business. Um, and so right now I'd like to uh, turn it over to Jim Floros, our President and CEO of the Food Bank. And as Jim is coming up, I'd like to just say thank you to Jim for his incredible work, his dedication, and when we talk about tireless effort, uh, I can't think of anybody else uh, that has put in the work, the time, uh, to the community and to the impact that we've had, not only through COVID, but literally through 2000, since 2013, since he started day one. Jim is going to give us a brief overview of the San Diego Food Bank's accomplishments this past year and a detailed presentation on the vital work of the San Diego Food Banks since the start of COVID-19 pandemic in mid-March. Jim? Thanks, Steve. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, I'm very fortunate to uh, work with a very talented uh, group of, uh, of individuals. We have a wonderful culture here. Um, you know, just my executive team of myself and my three VPs have 47 years of food banking experience. And top to bottom, our organization has over 800 years of food banking experience. Uh, this is a top-notch organization. Uh, state officials consider the San Diego Food Bank one of the top two food banks uh, in the state. And uh, many consider us the top independent food bank uh, in the nation. So we're very proud of our, our hard work, but we're only as good, obviously, um, as the people who support us. Uh, usually our annual meeting is a little more festive, and we have a nice reception here in the warehouse, and we have some appetizers and maybe some adult beverages. That's not uh, able to happen because of the COVID. So we're doing our best to make this a virtual experience. And we will uh, be going through, kind of uh, lay a foundation for some of you who might be uh, new to the food bank, kind of talk to you about the science of what we're doing. And then we're gonna talk a lot about the post COVID-19 uh, response. And then towards the end of the presentation, we will actually have an opportunity for you who are online to um, present questions, you can type it into the uh, text box and we'll answer as many of those questions uh, as possible. So let's take it away. So San Diego Food Bank, uh, we were founded in 1977. We've been serving this uh, community for over uh, four decades. And we're, today we're at our 90,000 square foot uh, Miramar facility. Uh, about uh, five years ago, we saw a need for uh, additional growth in the North County. We knew that North County was being underserved, but to really be able to serve that population, we knew we needed a hub uh, in that location. Uh, so at that time, the North County Food Bank was 
rethinking about where they wanted to go and what they wanted to do, and they were under another parent organization, and they actually approached us, and it was one of our partner agencies, and asked us if we would be interested in acquiring the North County Food Bank, and the timing was perfect. The stars and moon and everything lined up perfectly, so officially in 2015, we acquired uh, the North County Food Bank, our original facility, uh, was in San Marcos. It was pretty small and hard to do the kind of work we needed to do to really serve those in need in North County. Uh, so just last November, many of you maybe saw it in the media, very excited. We were able to move into a new facility, uh, a, a, a 40,000 square foot facility uh, in Vista. Uh, that is just a temporary uh, location for us uh, because we have bigger plans uh, for North County. Uh, for the next uh, two years, we'll be operating out of Vista, but the plan is to launch a capital campaign for a mega facility with way more services and bringing in nonprofit partners to really create a wraparound services approach to helping people in need because we all know that if people are struggling with food insecurity, they're going to have a whole host of other challenges and we want to make a kind of a one-stop shopping. People can come, get the services that they need and be able to go about to go to school, go to work or do all the things that they need uh, to be able to lift their families out of poverty and be successful. So we, I think we saw a photo of Miramar, that's a photo of Vista. Uh, just as a sidebar, uh, that Vista, Vista facility also serves as our um, regional diaper hub. We are the regional diaper bank and the community. We didn't have the room to store all those diapers here, so now we're storing all those diapers up in North County and that is the hub for all of our diaper distributions uh, throughout uh, the county. Um, I won't get into too far into the weeds about what we really do and how we really do it, but uh, the, uh, the uh, slide you see now just lists uh, the majority of our programs, our food to nonprofits program. Uh, one of the great parts about the San Diego Food Bank is that we provide food to more than 500 nonprofits. So for those of you out there, um, for those of you who are out there, can we go back to the last slide please? <clears throat> for those of you um, who are out there, if you know of an organization that has a feeding program, more likely than not, they're getting the majority of food uh, from us. Our emergency food assistance program is one of the two uh, government programs that we run. Uh, that first one, the EFAP, that serves between 80 and 100,000 people a month. The next one is our neighborhood distribution model, our distribution program. That's the program where we distribute uh, fresh produce at about 30 sites countywide. Uh, this past fiscal year that just ended June 30, we did about 15 million pounds of fresh produce. Most people don't think not, uh, food banks are doing fresh produce. It's a major part of our being uh, a nutrition bank. Our senior food uh, program, we have about 14,000 seniors that are getting a 36 pound box of food uh, once a month. It's also one of the federal programs that we work in conjunction with the USDA. CalFresh, uh, many of you know that as food stamps, and actually it's known as SNAP, but in California uh, it's called CalFresh. And so we have two full-time staff members that enroll people to help them uh, get the benefit from uh, that uh, assistance and really a, an opportunity for them to kind of be able to catch their breath and, uh, and resume life and maybe uh, pull their families out of poverty. Uh, food rescue program. You know, that's a big thing that everybody's talking about. There's too much waste, food waste in our community, so much waste that goes to the landfill. And so this is a program that captures food that still has three or four days of life, you get it out to people in need very quickly. We just have our nonprofit partners pick it up from different stores. The diaper bank, as I mentioned, uh, we're distributing about a half a million diapers per month. That's a lot of diapers. And we have about 57 diaper hubs uh, throughout the county. Our Food for Kids Backpack program, probably the program we're most uh, known for. Um, one of the things that uh, surprised me the most when I came to the food bank, that we have elementary age school kids in our community whose last, week, last uh, meal of the week is at fr on Friday at school. They get fed through a federal program called the Free and Reduced Lunch Program. And then these kids will go all weekend without eating and they don't come back to school. They only eat again until they come back to school on Monday. Uh, certainly something wrong with that. Uh, what we're doing about that is our Food for Kids Backpack program. We give the kids a backpack of nutritious food on Friday, gets them through the weekend. Monday morning, they come back to school refreshed, ready to learn. And so that's a really important program. Uh, on the go uh, food pantry program, a newer program, targeting junior high and high school kids, pantries on those school sites. And then another big program that we launched a couple of years ago, our, our college hunger relief program. We know that college students uh, face uh, huge food insecurity challenges, and it's pretty tough to be able to get an education, to get a good job, and be able to support your family when you have to choose between books and food. So I'm proud to tell you that we have a, a pantry partnership on every campus in San Diego County, community colleges included, and we're distributing a lot of food, over a million pounds a year, through all those college campuses.
<clears throat> so as I mentioned, the way we're able to reach as many people as we feed is we do that through uh, 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 200 direct food distributions that the San Diego Food Bank and the North County Food Bank conducts, and then we have um, that um, partnership with 500 nonprofit agencies. What I love about that is that you could say that the San Diego Food Bank is one of the most grassroots uh, nonprofits in our community because we've got those 500 partners. And so our job is really to enable and enhance and empower those nonprofits to be able to serve their service population. So we do that through food, we do that through expertise, and really it's a wonderful partnership and we couldn't do our important work without those great uh, 500 nonprofit partners. So pre-COVID, uh, the San Diego Food Bank was feeding about 350,000 people a month. We did that uh, you know, through that model of 200 distribution sites to 500 nonprofits. Um, this next uh, bullet <clears throat> is a little, um, I'll get into more detail. So last year, last fiscal year, about a year and a half ago, <clears throat> excuse me, we distributed about 32 million pounds of food. Uh, we were tracking to do about 36 million pounds of food this year, but because of COVID, just in the last three months of our fiscal year, we actually distributed 43 million pounds of food and 15 million pounds of fresh produce. So uh, crazy numbers. Uh, and then I mentioned uh, the senior program that's going to about 13,700 seniors, and they get that 36-pound box of uh, food. So that's business as usual uh, pre-COVID. <clears throat> uh, we'll also, so now... Um, our, our backpack program, which I mentioned to you, uh, we're conducting that program at 57 elementary school sites, about 2,800 kids receiving one of those backpacks every Friday. And then a big part of our ability to serve our community is our volunteer base. And the volunteers they are in six days a week, four nights a week, and they literally are sorting and packaging the food to go out to all these different uh, food distributions. So last year we had almost 32,000 uh, 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 volunteer visits. Well, thanks, Chris. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So one of the things I learned when I came to the food bank is most people associate the food bank with just feeding the homeless. And while we do serve the homeless, it's less than 5% of our service population. So how does our service population break down? <clears throat> Children living in poverty, uh, um, working poor, the working uh, class, working poor uh, individuals really trying to make ends meet but struggling to do that, active duty military, uh, seniors um, uh, living on a fixed income. One of the things that really surprised me the most uh, when I came to the food bank is that we're serving active duty military. So in a typical year, when we're feeding about 350,000 people a month, about 40,000 of those are active duty military, their dependents and veterans. And you know, obviously San Diego is a big military town, so we work really hard. We partner with 17 military-based nonprofits uh, to really make sure that our brave men and women in uniform get the food they need to be able to feed their families. So then, COVID-19 hit. I don't think anybody uh, could really have anticipated the impact that this was going to happen. Uh, we use March 12th as our, as our day because that was a day that the county, uh, uh, Wilma Wooten, uh, shut down the uh, county. We had to uh, shelter in place and we had to try to safeguard people uh, from the spread of the pandemic. So, uh, you know, San Diego Food Bank, again, we're feeding about 350,000 people uh, very quickly. Uh, that number, spiked to nearly 600,000 people, and it felt like it was almost uh, overnight. Uh, one of the things I'm most proud about the San Diego Food Bank is that we have a, um, in our DNA is being entrepreneurial, being able to, being a local organization, really having our thumb on the pulse of the needs of the community. Uh, we're used to finding a problem, creating a pivoting, creating a strategy, creating a program, and off we go. And that's been the, the norm for us for many, many years. And so the COVID-19 crisis, was no different. So quickly, we pivoted, we rallied, and we started making sure that uh, people in need were getting the food they need, and that people were you know, a little uh, panicked. And so we wanted to really make sure that the community knew that there was enough food. Our distribution model is 200 sites, the 500 nonprofit partners, uh, that was solid. And you know, we all know that a lot of people early on were very concerned. I mean, we heard about people uh, hoarding toilet paper. And you know, I even heard of a, full, a physical altercation at a Costco over uh, toilet paper. And so we really wanted to make sure in all our media and all our outreach that there's enough food, we're gonna be okay, stay calm, we'll bind, uh, bind, bind together, and we'll, we'll weather the storm, we'll get through the crisis. So uh, we can break down our COVID response 
in uh, three phases. So phase one um, was removing any existing barriers for our nonprofits. So literally on Thursday, the county had their declaration. By Monday, we'd already created our first strategy, and that was to get as much food as possible out to those nonprofit partners. And talking to our agencies, and they were saying that the lines were growing quickly. Some of their lines were doubling in size, so we removed all barriers, and we just tried to push as much food out as possible to those nonprofit agencies. And so just in the first two weeks of the pandemic, we distributed about 700,000 pounds uh, just to those nonprofit partners alone. And that's not even including the 200 distributions and all the other things that uh, uh, we're doing. So it was trying to kind of prime the pump, get a lot of food out in the community. <clears throat> The next phase, and if you may hear the jets in the background, we are across the street from the Miramar Air Station, so uh, you know, uh, bear with us. Um, phase two was mass distributions. Uh, we don't normally do mass distributions, but again, we're trying to shorten the lines um, at our distributions, and so we committed to doing four uh, mass distributions. So the first one was at, at the stadium in Mission Valley, the next uh, was Del Mar Fairgrounds, uh, the third was uh, Southwestern College in Chula Vista, and the last uh, at Grossmont Center. We learned some lessons. Uh, they served their purpose. We distributed a lot of food, maybe about 52 million tons of food, about 16,000 people. But we learned that really at these mass distributions, you can only really serve about 1,000 cars. And the problem is what happens if people don't have cars? And if you are, even if you publicize that you're only be able to serve 1,000 cars, uh, three, 4,000 cars might show up, and we saw that people were waiting in line, yet they were going home without food. And that really troubled us because everything we do, all our distributions, is about client dignity. And to wait for food and not get food, that's not the way uh, we do our, uh, do our important work. So we decided, okay, we committed to the four distributions, we did the four distributions, but now we're going back to our roots. We're going back to the neighborhood distribution model. This is what brought us to the dance. This is the way that we have effectively feeded people feeding people for over four decades, and we did it uh, with dignity. So phase three is our super pantry program and expansion of our mobile uh, pantry uh, uh, program. Next slide, please. So what we did is we did an RFP and what we, uh, to our 500 nonprofit agencies, and they applied, and we selected 35 of our nonprofit partners, and we turned them into super pantries. So what a super pantry is, it's a high volume, uh, high frequency distribution site. And the idea was to get as much food out, these locations were very strategic, and we get as much food out as possible through, through those 35 locations. All our other 465 nonprofit partners still up and running, our other 200 distribution sites still up and running, but these are high volume sites. And the idea was that we have a great need, we send people to these distribution sites, and then uh, you know, we can help, uh, you know, help people stop being uh, food insecure. Uh, so one of the things that we did with those 35 agencies is we gave each one a $20,000 capacity grant because we had to build their capacity, we had to build their ability to be able to serve this spike in demand. So each agency got a $20,000 grant about $700,000 in total to purchase refrigeration units, uh, storage units, pallet jacks, whatever they need to be able to, uh, to meet that demand. So the, um, the, um, the Super Pantry program is a million dollar commitment uh, by the San Diego Food Bank and none of that would have been uh, made possible unless all these uh, very generous San Diego donors have really been uh, so uh, wonderful in making a lot of financial gifts and contributions uh, to our organization. Um, so I believe, oh, here's a map uh, of our sites. So the green uh, S's, those are the location of the 35 super pantries. If you can see in the graphic, there's a little gray uh, uh, dot. That is the existing 500 nonprofit agencies. So these are the high density areas with the most people in need. But we wanted to ensure that the people in the back country uh, were still being served. And so that's why we expanded the mobile pantry. And uh, so the mobile pantry can make sure that not only the backcountry people are served, but also we may have other gaps of service, uh, pop-up distributions or what have you. So basically it's uh, three vehicles that can be uh, very fluid and make sure we can go where there's uh, areas of need. I believe uh, we have, uh, oh, and here is a list of all the uh, nonprofit agencies, many of, uh, many of which uh, you may know, you may even support them. So very excited, we launched it July 1. You know, it's a new program, and we've never heard of any other food bank 
that has ever done anything like this. And in fact, a lot of my other peers with other food banks have asked us to send the materials because they think this is a pretty powerful idea. So I believe we have a media clip that probably will explain the super pantry program uh, better than me. Bank was joined by local officials announcing that a number of the food bank's partners are becoming super pantries. As KUSI's Ed Linderman tells us, it's an effort to do even more for the hundreds of thousands of people in need. COVID has spiked a lot of numbers, other than just the number of people in the county who've come down with the virus. The San Diego Food Bank went from serving 350,000 people a month to nearly 600,000, a 67% increase. The strain on it and its 500 nonprofit partners, or pantries, was palpable. Early on, there were several mass distributions that attracted thousands. Not a very good sustained model and not much client dignity and waiting hours in line only to be turned away. Chula Vista Mayor Mary Salas. We had handed out the full capacity of those thousand tickets to the people. And yet when I left Southwestern College... There were people lined up still waiting to get into the parking lot. Thursday morning, Salas joined San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner and Escondido Mayor Paul McNamara, along with Assemblymember Todd Gloria, at the food bank's headquarters in the Miramar area. Call the announcement, which included food bank president and CEO Jim Floros, phase three. 35 of the 500 pantries have now been designated as super pantries. What we did is we did an RFP to our 500 nonprofit partners. Uh, we picked 35 of these nonprofit partners to become high frequency, high volume distribution sites. Uh, the requirements are they do at least three distributions a week and they do that until uh, December 31st. We estimate that each site will probably serve at least 15,000 people uh, per month. Thank you. Thank you. But not without added support. Another feature of the announcement included a drive through check presentation to representatives of several of the pantries. Thanks to a million dollars in donations to the food bank's COVID response fund, each super pantry is getting a check for $20,000 to help build its capacity. The purchase of refrigeration and storage units, pallet jacks. The official start, or should we say super start, July 1st in the Miramar area, Ed Linderman, KUSI News. And as I mentioned, uh, an important part of the Super Pantry program is the expansion of the Mobile Pantry program. We had the Mobile Pantry beforehand. We realized there were going to be some gaps in service. You know, we're at, uh, you know, 47 school sites, all the different things that we're doing, uh, trying to meet the need. So this, these mobile pantries allow us not only to serve the backcountry, but if we see spot uh, gaps in service, we can go there, do distributions, and make sure that nobody uh, goes uh, unfed. So really excited about the uh, uh, mobile pantry uh, program. So I thought, uh, you know, I'm a numbers guy. I like uh, statistics, and I think that they definitely uh, tell the story. So we just have a few uh, stats to throw at you. Uh, volunteers. I mean, we mentioned it earlier. Volunteerism is the lifeblood of the non of the San Diego Food Bank. We all know uh, nonprofits depend dearly uh, on uh, on volunteers, but for the San Diego Food Bank, they are actually an integral part of our supply chain. You know, we have uh, volunteers in the warehouse right now, and what volunteers are doing tonight is going to be part of a distribution tomorrow. So obviously, here's this huge workforce. Uh, which allows us to send more money uh, to the community and supporting the community because we don't have to pay for that, uh, that work. Uh, well, a big part of our, our, that volunteer base are about four or 500 companies that volunteer on a regular basis. Well, obviously with COVID, the, the uh, corporations are closing down. Um, they are uh, uh, staying at home order, but yet we still need volunteers. So we put out uh, the call for help from individuals and individuals heeded that call. Uh, we did everything we uh, had to do by CDC uh, guidelines to safeguard uh, those volunteers. So our shifts went from 40 people to 20 people. We did social spacing, hand washing stations, um, hand sanitizer, masks, gloves, everything we needed uh, to do to make sure that our volunteers um, were uh, coming in and, and doing the important work. And we literally were turning volunteers away. So I just can't thank everybody who's volunteered. And I see some of the same people uh, numerous times. I just can't thank all these volunteers that are working so hard uh, to help uh, people in need. So love our volunteers. 
Um, we mentioned our senior program, and we have about uh, typically about 14,000 seniors that are receiving one of these 36-pound uh, food boxes. But we saw that some of the seniors weren't coming out; they were not able to pick up their food box, uh, or they can send a proxy. And so what we did is we teamed with a group called Team Rubicon. They're retired military police and fire. It's a national organization, and they go out to different uh, disasters and volunteer and work very hard. So we created a call center, and we started calling the seniors that weren't showing up for their, uh, for their food boxes. And what was great about the calls, obviously the seniors liked the interaction, but also they, we were reminding the seniors that they could send a proxy. And some of them had forgotten that, they have a grandson or, or somebody that could go and pick up the box. And I think most of the boxes were actually picked up by a proxy. But for the seniors who didn't have a proxy, uh, and that we would ask them if they wanted us to um, deliver the box, and we did, and we delivered over 2,000 boxes. Uh, so that was a great way of making sure our seniors are being fed. Uh, obviously, uh, school-aged school -age children uh, affected by the uh, pandemic. We have a lot of children that are from uh, low-income families that were struggling. Um, as I probably have mentioned before, there's a federal program called the Free and Reduced Lunch Program. And there's a lot of children in San Diego County that receive breakfast and lunch at school. Well, now they're not in school. So how do they get those meals? So we have actually partnered with eight school districts. And right now we're doing weekly distributions at 40 different, uh, 47 different uh, school sites. And what basically they're doing the takeaway meals every day. And then once a week we roll up in one of our mobile pantries and we do, we do a food distribution. And so just in the last three months or so, we've distributed over one and a half million pounds of food just through those uh, school districts, just through those 47 uh, sites. Uh, as I mentioned also, we are the regional diaper bank. In a typical uh, month, we distribute about a half a million diapers, which is a lot of diapers. Uh, but May was a record breaking month. In the month of May, we actually distributed 850,000 diapers, which is an incredible feat. Uh, we have about 57 sites uh, throughout the county um, where we are distributing diapers out of. And then as we move forward with the mobile pantry program, we want to ensure, or I'm sorry, um, move forward with the um, super pantry program, we want to ensure that all those super pantries are also diaper hubs. Uh, we've been operating, out of the gate, we were operating at about a 25% food deficit, pounds going out versus pounds coming in. So we work, we work really hard to close that deficit. Uh, one of the ways we've done that is through food purchases. So to give you kind of a, a comparison, in a typical year, San Diego Food Bank, North County Food Bank, we do about a million dollars in food purchases. So a million dollars over 52 weeks. Well, since the COVID crisis, in the first 10 to 12 weeks of the COVID crisis, we've actually purchased more than $4 million worth of food. And I don't think that, I don't see that stopping. Um, I think we'll probably hit $5 million uh, worth of food purchases uh, by the end of the summer. And again, those food purchases would not be possible without the, all the generous donors in San Diego County that have come out and rallied around their local food bank. Um, so, you know, we don't know where this is going and we don't know how much um, that we're going to have to purchase, but we're working really hard uh, to ensure that uh, people have the food they need. Next slide, please. Uh, so just by in comparison, you know, the last full fiscal year, 32 million pounds of food, we've distributed 16 million pounds of food and just in, since the middle of March. Uh, again, that's about a 50% more than a normal uh, rate for us. And again, rallying up and getting a lot of food out in the, into the community. Next slide, please. And again, the big number that just sticks uh, with a lot of people that we've gone from feeding 350,000 people a month to nearly 600,000 people. And now with the uh, reduction of unemployment benefits, uh, with people who are on unemployment, then they're off unemployment, and they're trying to get back on unemployment, uh, we think that number is going to surge in the weeks and months to come. And again, uh, local food bank, uh, we're rising to the occasion, and we're going to ensure that these people uh, get the food they need to put food on the table. Uh, just uh, speaking of donors, um, we didn't have a slide big enough to cover all the donors, uh, but some of the larger ones are here on this slide, and uh, there's many, many more. You know, besides that, um, I think we have 20,000 new donors uh, just during the crisis. And so thank you, San Diego. Uh, you are a part of all that uh, we do. Next slide. Uh, so how can you be part of the solution? Well, one of the ways is continue to volunteer. Don't be discouraged if you see that all our shifts are full because we do have cancellations. And so we do need uh, volunteers. So volunteerism is a great way to support your local food bank. And then obviously making financial contributions. 
We can take $1, leverage that into five meals. We have a virtual food drive, which is really popular, and you actually can go online and, um, and buy food on our behalf. So I think we've raised about maybe a half a million dollars in just the virtual food drives alone. That's a great way of being a part of the solution. And another thing, uh, we take that slide back. Maybe most importantly, if you know of somebody that is in need, um, sandiofoodbank.org backslash get help. sandiofoodbank.org backslash get help. We update our website weekly and we'll list out all the distributions that we do, those 200, some are weekly, some are monthly. We list those each week. Usually it's over 100 per week. You should be able to find a distribution site near your home where you can get the food you need and with complete uh, dignity. So we have some things going on. If you shop at Vons or Albertsons, uh, we are doing our Schools Out, Hunger's Not, COVID-19 uh, summer food drive. Uh, we talked about the deficit. Well, this is a way that we're gonna try to close that deficit. So when you're shopping at Avon's or Albertsons, we ask that you pick up a couple extra items, stick it in one of the red barrels at the front of the store. It'll go a long way towards helping all these school-aged children uh, that are facing food insecurity. Uh, our Blues Festival, this was uh, gonna be a big, big year for us. It was gonna be our 10th anniversary of our aimloan.com uh, San Diego Blues Festival. Obviously, we can't have a physical event in September. So we're going virtual, kind of like our annual meeting. And so there'll be more information to come. We got a great lineup of about four or five bands. We're partnering with KUSI, partnering with iHeartMedia, and uh, we're gonna put on a great show. And it's a benefit concert for the COVID-19 crisis. And then our golf tournament, which was scheduled for July, we've rescheduled it to later in September. So there'll be more information on how you can participate in that golf tournament that benefits uh, our North County Food Bank chapter. So again, I just can't say it enough times, um, none of our important work, there's a saying, you can't, it takes a community to feed a community. None of this important work takes place without the tremendous support of great donors and with corporations and foundations and individuals, people we didn't know before now have become great friends. And we've had many donors that have made multiple COVID-19 uh, donations. So again, you know, the 600,000 people that we're feeding around, you are a part of everybody we're feeding. Uh, we couldn't do this important work without you. Uh, and, and one of the things that I learned early on uh, in the uh, crisis, how really well we were doing. And because we have built an organization based on excellence. So program quality, relationship with donors, uh, government officials, uh, people, um, you know, a, a great culture among the staff, uh, and we didn't flinch. And I was asked to be a speaker at a, a Lyon University um, uh, uh, management seminar. And the title of my talk was Build a Ship to weather the storm. Really, uh, the San Diego Food Bank and our North County Food Bank chapter, we built a ship, we built an organization based on excellence. What we were doing, maybe we didn't know it at the time, we built a ship to weather the storm. So our message to the community is if we all band together, we stay safe, we stay calm, you know, we can weather this storm. And again, San Diego, without your support, none of this uh, important work takes place. Uh, you're at the heart of all that we do. Okay, we do have uh, an opportunity for some questions. I think in your, on your screen, there's a box where you can type in uh, questions. And so we'll take a few of them while we still have time. The first question is, with the potential end to enhanced unemployment benefits and the end of the government's Paycheck Protection Program, are you expecting to see an increase in need in the coming weeks? That's a great question. I think I mentioned that. You know, we all know this thing changes uh, every 24 hours. We thought there would, it would die down during the summer, and then we thought maybe a spike during cold and flu season. We've seen that spike earlier, and now, you know, the $600 augmentation of the unemployment benefits is set to expire at the end of July. And then, of course, um, um, you know, we have a lot of people that are, went, to, went to work, stopped getting their unemployment benefits, and then they close, we close restaurants down again, so now they're unemployed again. So we do expect to see a big spike in demand um, in the weeks and months to come. Second question, how can the community help the food bank? Is it primarily through donations and volunteering, or are there other ways? Well, you know, I hate to say that money uh, uh, reigns supreme, but we are making these huge food purchases, and the fact we can take one dollar, leverage that into five meals, um, you know, the dollar, I don't know a nonprofit that can take a donor dollar uh, that far. And then um, we have a, a program, it's called a repack program, and we buy 2,000 pound totes of rice, beans, and oatmeal, and we repack it into one pound bags. That product is much cheaper than the other stuff that we get from the wholesale market. So we're expanding that program because having those staples available to people in need is gonna be a great way that we're gonna be able to combat the COVID-19 crisis. 
Another question, how will you step up service to school-aged children with closures continuing into the fall? Um, you know, we're, it's a wait and see. We thought schools were coming back. Um, and now it looks like they're not. So we're at 47 sites. I don't see that ending anytime uh, uh, soon. Uh, the mobile pantry helps out a lot with that. But we continue to partner with these eight school districts. We continue to make sure that these kids and these families get the food they need. And you know, not only are they get the takeaway meals, but they get a you know our distributions are usually 40 or 50 million, uh, 40 I wish million, 40 or 50 pounds, which is probably 40 pounds of, or 40 meals. So you know, we're giving people a lot of food that should be able to help them. You know withstand uh, their food insecurity for the next uh, week or so. Many people do not have access to a car. How does the food bank distribute food to folks who do not have vehicles? That's actually a great question, and that's actually one of the reasons why we moved away from the mass distributions, because a lot of our service population does not have a car. One of the things I didn't mention with the super pantries is those super pantries, they have to operate at least three days a week. They have to do that to December uh, 31st, but they also have to be able to take not only drive-in, uh, people in, in their cars, but also walk-up service. So again, these 35 distribution sites, they do accept uh, walk-ups so people can go to one of these super pantries, even if they don't have a car, and get the food they need. Another question that came in, can you use any volunteers to make phone calls from home? Um, you know, we could look into that. We have a call center uh, here. Um, and that and we've we've been able to uh, mitigate the the seniors but if we decide that we need to start making more uh, phone calls to seniors using uh, individuals in the community uh, would be great uh, great idea we could look into that and to circle back to the food deficit that was spoke about earlier uh, how is that going now at this point in time so it was at 25, I think it's 11, that numbers maybe even come down more as we do more food purchases and there's been some other opportunities for funding. Uh, our goal obviously is to get that down to zero, but as we make more food purchases, I see that deficit coming down. And with the repack program that you mentioned earlier, are you continuing that program during the COVID crisis? And can you elaborate on that a little? Actually, that program has probably never been more important. And so we're actually ramping up the, uh, the uh, program. We've actually committed to, we have a repack machine that can typically do about 2,000 bags an hour. We've committed to another repack machine that actually can do 5,000 bags an hour. Our idea was, Maybe that the crisis kind of dies down during the summer, but with the anticipation that it would spike in the, in the fall and winter, we wanted to be ready. So we've committed uh, to another repack machine. So now uh, we're going to go from doing 2,000 bags an hour to, to uh, 7,000 bags an hour. So that repack program to me, rice, beans, and oatmeal, the staples, it's a great way. It's more cost efficient than a lot of other uh, food that we're purchasing. So I think you know, that repack program is going to be a centerpiece of our uh, COVID response. And one last question, um, just to restate the Get Help URL, how can people find out where they can get food in their area? So uh, sandiafoodbank.org backslash get help. So not only will you see the updated of all the other distribution sites that we do, plus all 35 of those super pantries are gonna be listed. So Sandia Food Bank, We'll give you everything you need. You can volunteer, you can make a financial gift, you can find out where you can get help. Uh, it's such a great resource for information. Uh, no one should go hungry. There's enough food for everybody. Again, we just need to band together, stay calm, and we will weather the storm. So uh, again, I think my time is up. I actually will uh, send all of you uh, off to your next thing about 15 minutes early. Uh, again, I cannot say enough. Our important work doesn't happen without the uh, generous support of our volunteers and our donors. Um, we always say that when people support uh, the local San Diego Food Bank, they're investing in the quality of life, not only for today, for generations to come. So on behalf of the 600,000 people that we're serving every month, thank you, San Diego, for your support. Oh, I give the uh, give it back. To the, see, this is new, all new for us. There you go, Steve. Thanks, Jim. Um, honestly, just incredible work. Thank you for spending the time to go through um, the impact that you're having in San Diego. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, honestly, uh, we miss you. We wish uh, we were able to see all of you in person. But nonetheless, thank you for your commitment to the San Diego Food Bank. Thank you for your commitment to the San Diego community. We are uh, making incredible impact. So with that, um, 
I'm going to thank everybody. Uh, this will include and adjourn our virtual uh, meeting. So we are meeting adjourned. Thank you. Take care, everyone.